With the Kendrick Lamar and Drake Beef seemingly in remission right now, we can take a big picture look at this battle and see who won and what was really said. In terms of diss tracks, I believe they're like a three-legged stool. There's three main criteria to be effective in a battle. Number one is, what are you saying? The bars, the punchlines, the rhymes, the lyrics, the angle you take, the material you use to make fun of the other rapper. Number two is, how good of a song is it? Do people want to play it? Is there replay value? Do they like the beat? Is there a hook? Catchy lyrics? Are they going to play it in the club? And then number three, your release of that song. Is there album art that's clever? Is there uh, um, a music video that goes along with it? And when do you drop your record? Did you go first? Did you go second? Did you wait too long? Did you drop it immediately? Those three criteria, you need some combination of all three. And if you're missing any one of all of those things, your record will fail. Now, in this battle, we can see those three criteria on display with the overall caveat and asterisk that coming into this battle, Drake had the most amount of haters that wanted to see him lose. The rap game is a lot like sports, right? And Drake is LeBron. He's been around for 20 years. He wins all the time. He's one of the most physically talented, but he also does some weird shit that makes you go like, I don't know, that was just fucking lame. That's what LeBron does. That's what Drake does. And the same way, both of those guys have a ton of people who want to see him fail. So coming into this battle, there's a lot of people who are going to go with confirmation bias and say, yes, that was enough to beat Drake. And so when you analyze this battle through the lens of those three criteria, you can see that Kendrick stomped on Drake with way more of, is it a good song? And when did he drop it? Then the actual number one criteria of what are you actually saying? Because we reached a point where both rappers are just probably lying. At best, they're rumors. At worst, they're flat out lies. Drake says that Kendrick is a wife beater and uh, his kid is not his. Kendrick says that Drake is uh, a pedophile and he's a deadbeat dad. We don't know the substance there. We don't know any truth to it. So it goes back to your strategy and how you released it. And Kendrick, in the back half of this battle, just ran away with it. Because you remember, in the beginning, Drake was up. Drake was in the lead. He put out push-ups. He followed up with a tailor-made freestyle, continued to poke at him. It was 20v1. People were calling him Thanos. He was like a sympathetic figure. But he started saying, where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? And that's when Kendrick took over. He puts out Euphoria. Good song. Kind of Kendrick-y for a little bit. It's like too weird for me. But he had some bars, had some jabs, and it was enough that you go, okay, the battle is on. But a couple days later, I'm thinking to myself, Euphoria is not enough. That's not going to stop Drake. But what happens? Drake, Mr. Back-to-Back, -back, lets himself get back-to-backed. Kendrick puts out 616 in LA. Now, this is where that tripod comes back in. I had heard a music industry insider said that Drake had a record ready and was going to put it out as soon as Kendrick dropped his response. He didn't do that, left it open, which allowed Kendrick to go twice on him and put out 616 in LA. Now, 616 in LA says that Drake has a mole in his camp and that everyone around him wants to see his downfall, and it finally gets Drake to put out his record, Family Matters. Looking at Family Matters through the lens of the tripod, when it comes to that number one, what are you saying? Family Matters might be the best song in this whole beef. The punches he's throwing, the flow, the style, and he's saying, you beat your wife and you're raising a kid that's not yours. Those are his nuclear bombs. He pushed the red button. And for about 20 minutes, everyone was like, don't fuck with Drake. But what did Kendrick do? He came back with that third leg of the tripod and drops Meet the Grams in 20 minutes after Drake dropped. It's a weird fucking song. It's dark. It's depressing. No one's ever going to replay it. But he's talking to Drake's family and he completely snuffed out Family Matters. No one's talking about Drake's record anymore. It's all about Kendrick and how he completely undercut him. The next day, Kendrick puts it all together. He continues to run up the score, dropping another one before Drake can do it. He continues to hammer that Drake is a pedophile, no matter if it's a lie or not. And then he makes the club banger. Not like us. Dun, 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 dun. Ovi ho. 
You don't know nothing about that. Everyone crip walking, dancing. It's a song of the summer. People outside of this battle are loving it. Girls, people who don't know anything are running around listening to an anthem about you being a pedophile. In essence, what Kendrick did was run a Donald Trump campaign as his battle rap. He had slogans. He had catchphrases. He had the most prolific. He had, he said it the loudest. He said it the most often. He said it in the easiest way for people to digest. It does not matter that he's lying and Drake's lying. It's who is the best liar. Who is packaging up these lies and presenting it in the best way. And now Lamar, who's usually known for this high level, cerebral, artsy music, dumbs it down for the common denominator fan. He's got them chanting, oh, be ho. He's got them saying, certified lover boy, certified pedophile. Not like us. These are things, this is like the equivalent of build that wall or make America great again. He has a radicalized fan base that wants to win and is gonna be on your side no matter what. You just gotta give him the ammo and he gave it to them plenty at the right time, in the right style, saying the right things. Combine all of that brilliant strategy from Kendrick Along with some Drake miscues, number one, not dropping that track soon enough. Number two, not having a club banger like he did with Back to Back. Number three, the bars about freeing the slaves. A lot of people didn't like that. That was a big misstep. And number four, allowing the pedophile rumors and jokes to get to him. Trying to say that he was the one who fed Kendrick the information about the 11-year-old constantly denying being a pedophile but that's where that's where Kendrick ran a beautiful campaign. If you call your opponent a pedophile, if he responds to it, he's giving credence to it. If he doesn't respond to it, everyone says, "How come you're not responding to the allegations? You are completely fucked." And I actually think that's pretty weak on Kendrick's part to win a battle that way, but it's even stupider for Drake to let himself get painted into that corner. You know what Kendrick Lamar did about his fake allegations about beating his wife and the kid not being his? You know what he said about it? Nothing. He just continued on offense. Brilliant strategy. And doesn't matter that Drake might have the best verse out of this whole thing. Doesn't matter that he was winning in the beginning. Kendrick ran up the score at the end. And he told a bunch of lies, but he told them well and often.